life living in Jamaica, I have never seen an incident where the police or the JDF barge into a well be known in an affluent area and take out an individual. Hi guys and welcome back to the Essence of May. So this video was inspired by a news article I saw yesterday um, in the Jamaica Gleaner regarding the case of Keith Clark. Um, yesterday was a trial and um, his wife took the stand where she testified to what she saw on that date. So she, she testified to the event that occurred on the day that Key Clark was killed. Um, it sparked an intrigue in me and I just thought that I'd come and give my commentary on the old Key Clark incident um, slash case. And if anyone does not remember who Key Clark is, he's the businessman slash chartered accountant, you know, slash very well be known individual in Jamaica that was killed in 2010 that was at around the time um of the old Dodos incident if you remember that was a very you know disturbing time in jamaican history one of the most one of the most disturbing um times in jamaican history i was in jamaica at the time um and i must say and i lived close to i lived close to where everything was taking place in tivoli gardens and if you remember it wasn't just tivoli gardens it had spread so even around my area people were killed on that day it's like the, the violence just was spreading all over jamaica our houses were burnt down i remember having so much fear i remember hearing all the gunshots and so on so it was a very chaotic time when that whole incident was taking place and it was around that time that key clark would have lost his life as well. So I'm going to delve into this and give my commentary on what I think, which, which for me is very, you know, mysterious in my opinion. And I'm going to share that right now. So looking back on the Keith Clark incident, it really makes, you know, me reflect. And it really makes me wonder because at the time, social media wasn't so much of a thing. So as it is now. So now I do have a platform where I can share my, my thoughts on this. And one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things, you know, that I, that I found that I found so hard to grapple with. Of all my life in Jamaica, and I've been in Jamaica for about 24 years of my life. So I've lived and I've lived in the same place for 24 years. So I, I have a little bit of an idea of how the system works. And for all my life living in Jamaica, I have never seen an incident where the police or the JDF barge into a well be known businessman's house. You'd say, quote unquote, him have money. This person has money. So you'd say, a rich man's house in a very, in an affluent area. I've never seen it where the police or the JDF has ever barged into an affluent area and take out an individual in the manner at which it is alleged that they took out Keith Clark. The reason why this is strange to me is because usually looking at the whole theory that Keith Clark had, you know, ties to Dodos, that's something that goes around and pretty much the um, Jamaica defense force was looking for Dodos Keith Clark's house. However, even if they thought that even if they thought that Dodos had any connections or you were staying at that home, you'd be I've never seen a situation where a house is barged down. That's what they get but again, like I said, this is a very prominent member of society. It's very well be known individual with money. Usually in this, these instances, the police or the JDF would knock, investigate, knock the individual's home in these areas, ask questions, apprehend if that is needed. But rarely you ever see these communities or these individuals doors being kicked off where this individual got 21 gunshots, which is what Keith Clark got. He, he, he was shot 21 times based on the news article. Yeah, that's something that I've been 
grappling with like it doesn't really make a lot of sense and the next thing that doesn't make sense is that you know obviously it is, it is said that Keith Clark has a license for a harm I just can't understand a well-thinking you know a well-thinking businessman you know chartered accountant well-educated man would this firearm unless he feels that there's no way he's coming out of that situation it just seems to me like you know what you would hear on the news where the, the, the you know operations take place where you go for a said um gunman and it's just shoot out you understand um you know when operations take place and you know that that individual is not walking out of that um house alive like i said it's just a mystery to me as if he knew that you know he's not he's a target and that's where i was just wondering like it's very strange that this happened to this individual shot so many times all of this which you know is in it's it's, it's going through trial now so we just have to leave it up to the justice system to decide what really happened but again it is just it baffles me because the only time I see these sorts of things taking place is in ghetto. Really, like, you see it all the time. Police kick off door, soldier kick off door, treat people like nothing. The way how I heard, the way how it was testified by, by Keith Clark's wife, how they were treated on that day, it just sounds like a ghetto raid. I saw it sound to me. Like a get a raid, and even if the aim was to find who they were looking for, it's just not the norm for these things to happen and happen in this way. It has truly intrigued my interest. But remember, I think nowadays, nowadays people are waking up to what the world really is with everything that's happening, with all of the people getting exposed, with all the things we are realizing that things are not necessarily what it seems. And we're having an understanding of who is truly in charge. As much as we think it's this way, we're realizing who is really in charge. Um, you know, and the dark side of everything, you know, the dark side of the world, you know, what's around us that we've been, we haven't really realized until now. And because of social media, this is becoming more of a, I open up for all of us so we know that everything is not always what it seems and if something looks very strange that means it, there's some strange about it really as I said if something a gusso it nearly gusso so you tend to find that there's if you hear something and people you know it, it nearly gusso or something like that so yeah that's that's really what I've been processing all day analyzing in my head like looking at and say hmm this is very a very strange case um but the trial is ongoing now so we'll see how that goes and what comes of it but yeah you do share your thoughts with me you know um what do you think have you been following the story what does it seem strange to you as well you know what you think let me know in the comment section um do give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet subscribed if you like the content and what i do until next time godspeed big ups bye guys bye